Hi boys and girls, this is Lesson 2.8, all about multiplicative comparisons. Please write that and the date in your notebook, and then come back. So the first thing I want you to do is um, take a look at this math message. It says, look at the ribbons and then read the statement given. Eve's ribbon and Maxine's ribbon. Statement, Eve's ribbon is shorter than Maxine's ribbon. And then it tells you to measure the two ribbons in centimeters and write two more statements describing how the lengths compare. I didn't want you to try and measure the screen again like uh, the last time when I didn't make myself clear, so I thought I'd go ahead and just write the measurements on there for you. So, um, Eve's is 8 centimeters and Maxine's is 16 centimeters. So, two more different statements about that. Once you have that done in your notebook, you can come back and check the next slide. So I give you four different things that you may have said. You may have said something like, the length of Maxine's ribbon is two times the length of Eve's ribbon, or Maxine's ribbon is twice as long as Eve's, or two of Eve's ribbons would be equal to the length of Maxine's ribbon. Or Eve's ribbon is half the length of Maxine's because eight is half of 16. So if you had something along those lines, great. If you want to jot down those possibilities that I wrote, uh, that would be fine as well. Um, it does have some good language in there for you. And I want to just make sure you know that those kinds of statements are called comparison statements. And comparison statements include information about both quantities or amounts being compared. We're going to do a lot of work with that today, so make sure you understand that concept. I'm comparing two things. So here are some words or phrases that you might hear in comparison statements. We might say shorter than, longer than, two times as long, two of these will equal that. Those kinds of phrases or words are comparison words and phrases. And really we should know that any words or phrases that recognize the two quantities are in the relationship with each other are what we're um, talking about when we talk about comparison statements. And uh, this relationship here involves multiplication. So these specific statements that we've been using with the ribbons are called multiplicative comparison statements. So comparison statements that have multiplication involved. So make sure you have some notes written for yourself about that, and then you can go on. So here's a problem, and let's see what we can do with it. So a DVD costs $15, and a book costs $5. Could you make some multiplic multiplicative whew, comparison statements about these two objects? So you just took some notes about some phrasing that you might use, and you have an example from the ribbons. See what you can do. Pause it. Write some down. When you're ready, come on back. How about this? Could we say the DVD costs three times as much as the book? Or three books equal the cost of the DVD? I'm sure you could, you probably came up with some other ones as well. As long as they're comparing the two different quantities and using multiplication to do so, I'm sure you have it. So we've got the comparison statement. Now I want to make sure that you get that we could use equations to show the relationship between the two quantities. So what equation could you write to describe the relationship between the DVD and the book? Give it a go. See what you come up with and then come on back. So we can use equations to show the relationship between the quantities. Um, and here's some that you could have said. You could have said 5 times 3 equals 15, or 15 equals 5 times 3. And in those, we know that the 5 is talking about the cost of the book, and the 3 represents the number of times more the DVD costs than the book. And the 15 represents the cost of the DVD. So notice how I put those numbers together in that equation, equation where it has two sides and it's separated by an equals sign, equation has equal as the root, the beginning letters, same. 
So the mathematical relationship between the costs of the two items is the cost of the DVD is three times that of the book. So make sure that you get that. Okay, so now that we've had that conversation, could you come up with an equation for the ribbons that we were talking about earlier? See if you can write an equation down. After you have that down, come on back. How about this? Could we say 8 times 2 equals 16? Or 16 equals 2 times 8? So uh, 8 is the length of Eve's ribbon, and it's 2 times um, shorter, I guess is the way I worded that, 2 times shorter than Maxine's, which is 16. Okay, so let's try that whole concept with a story problem. So Scarlett has seven crayons in her pencil box, and Liam has four times as many crayons as Scarlett. So how many crayons does Liam have? Well, you know I could solve that in multiple ways. We've had lots of conversations about different ways we could solve it. Here's a, here's a couple things. So I could make an array um, by doing four groups of seven, and those four groups of seven would equal 28. If I counted all those dots, I'm going to have 28, right? Or I could say to myself, 7 doubled is 14, and 14 doubled is 28. That would have given me my four sevens, right? So I could do it either of those ways. You may have yet another way to be able to, to do that. So we used multiplication to solve different types of problems. We've done equal groups, arrays, area models. Um, but another type of multiplication problem focuses on comparing two quantities. Um, it, inv it involves showing that one quantity is a specific number of times as many or as much as the other. So let's think about this multiplicative relationship with the story problem I just told you. So let's see if we can answer these questions. Whose number of crayons is greater? Well, we know that's Liam's. How do we know? Well, it's said in the problem that he has four times the amount of scarlet. So how many times is great? Four times is great, right? So will, will, will Liam actually have more or fewer than seven crayons? And then explain that. So we could say the problem says that Liam has four times as many as scarlet. I know that times means multiplication. So he must have more because she had seven to begin with, right? So he must have more than the seven. Okay. So what number is four times as many as seven? 28. That's what we just solved with our array or with the doubling of the numbers. So an equation that we could write that would represent this situation, we could say C equals four times seven or 4 times 7 equals C, C being a letter, a variable that's put in place of an answer. All right, let's try another one. 3 times 9 equals 27. Okay, so there's your equation, starting off this time with the equation. Let's look at the story. Will has a number problem, I should say. Will has 9 CDs. Jeremy has 3 times as many CDs as Will. How many CDs does Jeremy have? So does that equation that's up above represent the situation in the number story? How do you know? Try and figure that out. Write the answers down for yourself to those questions. Make your brain work for you there. See what you come up with. And when you think you have it, come on back. So the equation does represent the situation in the number story and how we know well, the equation tells me that 3 times as many as 9 is 27, which correctly matches the situation in the number story. We said that Jeremy, Jeremy has 3 times as many CD, CDs as Will, and Will had 9. So it correctly matches the number story. So what's the comparison being made in the number story? Well, the number of CDs Jeremy has is being compared to the number of CDs Will has. And 
how do you know that one quantity in this equation is a number of times as many as another quantity in the equation? Well, the problem says that the number of CDs Jeremy has is three times as many as nine. 27 is three times as many as nine. See all, how all these pieces are playing together? So I'm saying them from different angles for you, but it's all still doing the same thing. All right, so how about this one? 20 equals 5 times 4. How can this equation represent a comparison? So let's think through some things to try and help us with that. So we could say 20 is 5 times as much as what number? That'd be 4. Or we could say 20 is 4 times as much as what number? And that would be 5. So we can say that 20 is 4 times as much as 5, or 20 is 5 times as much as 4. Hmm. So have some fun now and create a comparison number story to match that equation. You can just make up a story. Like the last one was about CDs and two people who had CDs. What could you say for this 20 equals 5 times 4? Put a story in place. Jot that down. We'll be looking at those when we go over the lesson. So now you're going to go work on this page in your math journal. Um, and that would be page 53 in your math journal. So um, work on that. See how you can do. Give it your best shot. And then check your answers on the next slide once you have it done or as done as you can make it without coming to me for the lesson. This stuff is tough, I know. So you really have to have your thinking cap on. Give it a go. And there are the answers for you. I hope you did well. If not, don't freak out. You have a lesson yet to come, and we'll be talking about it. Okay, have a good one.